What is art? <laughs> what is art? I mean, like, that's... Uh... That's the thing that, um, that when you hear its name called, then you grab a gun <laughs> and you want to destroy it. I mean, once something is called art, it's destroyed, you know. Uh, it, that's a name, you know, that's, that's, that's been corrupted, you know. I, I've lost faith in what, what art is. Um, you know, I remember when, uh, when I was uh, actually believed that I should bring my work to a gallery, you know, when I was much younger, even though now I've had some, some success, uh, when galleries looked at my work, originally they, they were, you know, saying, oh, you know, this is not art, this is illustration, <laughs> you know, and uh, I with the... Yeah, with the invention of photography, that um, figurative work was dead, and the the only like figurative work that was accepted at that time was the photorealist. And to me, the photorealist just proved what you know these asshole you know. Um, critics were saying, you know, because uh, photorealism, you know, is, is saying, yeah, the photo is, is what's important. So they would make these paintings that are precious reproductions of a photo, but they have no life. They, you may as well just show the photograph, yeah. but you look at a Bruegel painting, you know, you look at uh, Durer, you look at uh, Grunewald, you know, you look at uh, Van der Weyden, no photograph can ever capture you know, uh, what they put in paint. Uh, and uh, so I lost faith in that whole term art, you know, and then... Um, or the art world. Well, what I was going to say, which is even, which is more important, is that, um, the yeah, when the art world was uh, seeing what I had to do, the subject matter that I painted and my performances, um, there was one, one critic who said that my work was pathological. So I thought, ah, that's it. I'm a pathologist. <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about pathology. Is there a difference between art and entertainment? Uh, <laughs> you're going back to that same term. Is there a difference between pathology and entertainment? Um, uh, pathology is uh, maybe an, uh, in my case an unhealthy obsession and so my unhealthy obsession um, causes me to be interested in certain uh, subjects that would uh, that are sometimes offensive to other people but that entertains me and I'm the one that I care about I care about what entertains me. Okay. I don't need, man, I don't even know if you exist. How do I know if you exist? You know? So you don't care so, about the audience? Audience? What audience? I'm the only audience. Look, if I, uh, if I take one of my knives here and I stab myself and it fucking hurts and I'm bleeding, if I take that same knife and I stab you, I don't feel a thing. Which one do I care about? Which one wants to be entertained? Me or you? Can or should artists depict unpopular truth, truths in their work? I mean, certainly unpopular you. truths. I mean, that uh, truth, that whole, that, that word is so full of... Um, it's as bad as art. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that word, the minute it's spoken... Trouble. It's... It's corrupt, you know, and uh, but maybe um, maybe corruption, though, you know, is some place where truth starts um, in decay, you know, and uh, because in decay is where um, it's where 
finally things reveal themselves to you uh, when they start to unravel and fall apart. Decay is natural. De decomposition yeah. is natural. Yeah. Should an artist ever self-censor? You, you don't keep you keep wanting to talk about this <laughs> this this um, art thing, but uh, censor. I mean, uh, that should be the enemy of of all of life. I mean, forget about artists. I mean, that should be True. the enemy True. of any living creature. You know, to um, to be told, you know, uh, what you should think. You know, what what you should. Uh, you know what you should eat. You know even what you should smoke or drink or you know for for someone to to tell you some um, authority that's a made up authority. Some like um, some you know a uh, bunch of you know. people <laughs> and even that word uh, full of scary things uh, there's a bunch of people that get together you know and they form this uh, so-called authority and the they thing. want yeah and they want this power they want power over you uh, over the individual and and you know that's where you know religion comes from and, you know there there's certain um, ways in which the this so-called authority tries to control um, your life because the more that they can control your life the more power they have you know and the more um, the more power that you uh, give up, the more that they have. So, so the the censor comes from you giving up power. You know, when they tell you to do certain things, you're giving up a little piece of of yourself. And the the more that you give up, the more power that they have, and the more that they can tell you. Um, like once they got you like um, you know drinking you know the right um, you know um, pure spring water you know and uh, eating the uh, the right um, um, you know precious um, like whatever the day of the week is like you know what they tell you what is the right way to eat food and then when they tell you on the on the boob tube uh, all these things that you should be doing, um, these ways that you were were the simple things like just what to eat, you know, what to you know if you if you know if you want to go to sleep, you know, you take this kind of pill. These things start with just the body, but eventually, once they have controlled that part of like you, the virus, the, virus. Yeah, then they start controlling your mind. Then they can tell you, like, who for, you know, who, who to listen to, you know, who you should get behind, um, who's your friend and who's your enemy. And... People are worshiping, you know, at at this altar, which is a television set, you know, and a television set is like something out of uh, Easter Island. You watch TV, don't you? Sure, I love TV. I mean, TV is a a god. I mean, it's a fucking it's a god that I'm that I'm afraid of. You know, I did a an uh, an offering to the god because I'm so fucking scared of him. But I but I know that. Um, He's a god, or he, or she, or, or it is a god um, that is worthy of my respect. You know, uh, it's a it's a drug. It's uh, it's a teacher. It's a, as you said, entertainment. It's um, 
it's a babysitter you know it's it's a great and, and powerful God you know it's uh, if you think that, that Jesus you know uh, is the God of you know of the world that we live in now you, you're mistaken the God of of our times is the television set the most powerful God in the world I'm very scared of that God and I know I know that God is uh, worthy of my fear. Do you think some people have the same view when they see your paintings? It's like a, either like a God or like it being spiritual or religious? Well, I mean, I, how, can I, how can I answer what, what someone else sees when they look at... You get emails from them, people? Or? Yeah, yeah, I get people that, that say things like that, but I, I don't know what... Um, who knows what the experience is of, uh, of someone else? I only know my yeah, own. They might be uh, my yeah. own experience. You yeah, know, they might not be articulating the experience that they're having. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's so hard for human beings, you know, uh, to connect with other human beings. You know. And well, I've noticed. Um, what was that? The uh, it was a psychedelic solution show. That's a bit famous now. And uh, just watching people's reaction to your work um, was really interesting. Um, so what was their reaction? Well, some people, you know, have like a repulsion to it. They're like, a, they want to look, but they like kind of look away. Um, well, I've had a strange experience along those lines, which is that like, I, I've had like a... People that have become like uh, like ardent collectors, you know, of my work now, but that at this first, at the time that they first saw the work, um, my work, they were, you know, repulsed by it, and they said, "No, I, I, I this is too much, you know, I, it's, no, it's not something I'm interested in." But then. They can't get it out of their mind, and so then they go back, you know, and they look. They just can't help bringing themselves. It's almost like, uh, you know, the thing they're being drawn back into it, and then they can't get it out of their mind, and then they become obsessed with it. And these have been some of my, you know, collectors that who where the work means the most to them started out by hating the work and now have become like the biggest champions of the work and and I appreciate that even though I'm not I haven't experienced it from their perspective so I can't answer from the way that you asked the question but I can answer it from the way that it was told to me you know by some of the people you know who now you know are like I consider like family you know and that they got to me in that way do any of them um, build cabinets so they can close off the paintings and, and yeah there, there's sometimes? well yeah there, there was there's some that uh, there's a couple of cases like that of, of cap of uh, cabinets that, that were built and also um, the, one, the thing that 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 I think of when you asked me that question is um, back um, when my in my first marriage uh, the uh, the sister of, of my wife uh, Nancy Piver at the time when her sister came over with her kids it was required that we had to put um, our uh, bed sheets over my paintings you censored I didn't it's <laughs> like I came in there you and know, it, it was all covered I've yeah. had experiences like that and I was like what <laughs> um, I guess obviously that marriage <laughs> went to hell, but uh, but it went to hell in uh, in many different ways. That being one of them, that was really disturbing. You know, to to me when you have uh, someone that you know that loves you, and um, that's one of the things that um, you know that. Uh, Strangely, that I do believe in. I do believe in love. You know, like uh, 
What about hate? I believe in hate, sure. I believe in hate as strongly as I believe in love. And I, I believe in, in, in hell and heaven, but only here on earth. I don't believe anything, I don't believe that heaven and hell exist, you know, in an afterlife, but I do believe that heaven and hell exist right here. Absolutely, you know, and, 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 it can be proven. Yeah. And, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I also don't say that. Uh, I have to qualify what I just say about like what happens after, because I really don't know what happens after. So what I'm when I say I don't believe in heaven and hell after I die. Uh, really, what I'm saying is I don't know, uh, but I do know for sure that heaven and hell exist. You know, in this form. This, you know, uh, flesh and bone and uh, veins and muscles and you know intestines and this body. This can fucking hell can happen to this thing really easily. There's it can be tormented and destroyed and and it, there's so much pain that can happen to this both uh, physically and and emotionally and spiritually. And also the same, you know, corporal, you know, thing, whatever this crazy thing is, can have heaven inside of it. I mean, God, when I'm fucking my lover, it's, you know, it's heaven, you know, and it, all these things exist, but only here, you know, in the flesh, you know, but it once, but when the flesh disappears, I don't know if those same things you know that were talked about you know uh <laughs> you know by priests when i was in catholic school and they're talking about when you die all this stuff about heaven and hell i don't know i don't know about that but i haven't i haven't been there yet so do you consider yourself catholic i yeah i would say that um i'm not sure i even believe in god but i'm a goddamn catholic because I am, I was born and raised um, with all of the ritual and the, the, the drama. I was, you know, uh, my mom was obsessed with Catholicism. Uh, my father thought it was all a bunch of shit, you know, and he's like sleeping off, you know, he's drunk from the night before. But I became obsessed with it, you know, and my mom, you know, who, who you know, who was, who I was closest to. You know, I would see, you know, how much she, you know, was obsessed with, you know, the Catholic religion. But then, you know, when I'm when I'm getting old enough to have Holy Communion, uh, they won't allow my mom to have, you know, to to uh, eat of the flesh of Jesus <laughs> and drink his blood. And so I'm like asking questions, like why, you know. Uh, what's the matter, you know, and uh, then I, you know, I come to find out that uh, she's been excommunicated, you know, Why? because, uh, because at that time in Catholicism, you, uh, you couldn't get a, you know, you couldn't get divorced, oh, yeah. and uh, so marrying my father um, got her excommunicated. So I'm think so I started to realize, yeah, there's some hypocrisy, you know, here, you know, and uh, and I started to, you know, uh, research the scriptures, and then I was also interested in uh, the apocrypha and like the uh, the pagan, like the Roman accounts of the life of of. Uh, Jesus, like the different Roman philosophers, and and I, I came to realize that there, you know, that it's you know it's it's a fairy tale, and uh, but a good fairy tale. I mean, it has some good. There's a lot of good stuff in the Bible. It's full of contradictions, but uh, but it's it's a fairy tale. It's uh, and it's mythology. I mean, like the Greek. Mythology, or which also is fascinating to me, and they're they're great stories, but they're also like Poe, you know, and like Celine, 
it's it's great literature. Has anybody but, ever accused you of blasphemy or altering those mythologies? All the time. But I mean, Jesus was, you know, considered a, a heretic, you know. So, he was anti-church, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, his friends um, were like like my friends, you know. They were, um, you know, they were prostitutes and, and thieves and, and murderers. And th those were the people that he um, hung out with. He disdained, the people that he disdained were the Pharisees, you know, the ones that were controlling the Jewish religion, which was his religion. I mean, he, he, um, I mean, he was fighting for, you know, for the Jews, you know, he, in fact, he would be horrified by the, how his name is being used today. In the beginning no. of uh, Rest in Pieces, you talk about <clears throat> people like you said Jesus associates with, and you're talking about junkies and homosexuals, and yeah. and and you in the performance in the opening, you you said these they're not the problem, you're the problem. Yeah, you consider your work political in that way. Well, like the the, the term political um, is also another one of those problematic <laughs> words that, that I that I hate. I can't stand. You don't, you don't. I hate politics. You know. I, you don't vote. I never vote. I mean. Have I, you ever? No, I've never voted. Why not? Because I. You know. Like to me, it's like putting your. I don't know. It's it seems so foolish to me. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, what do you you know what am I voting for? You know, it's like. It's even though. Team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, okay. I mean, like, maybe the the reason to vote is because you choose, um, you know, a, a quicker death or a slower death. You know, or lesser what, of two evils. Yeah. Okay. What? Um, I mean, no matter what, no matter what button I push, it's causing a certain amount of misery. You know, maybe it's less misery if I'm like trying to choose. Oh, which button is going to cause the least amount of misery? Or, or different, trade one for yeah. another. Yeah, I Very mean, I, I just can't do it. I can't. Game. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. Who's your favorite artist? Me. <laughs> but, but I don't even know. Uh, but I'm not an artist. I'm a pathologist. <laughs> so, but. Uh, Why do people fear your pathology? What's Some people. It? What say they again? Why do some people fear your pathology? Why do they fear looking at your paintings? See, you ask me a question that can't be answered by me. It can only be answered yeah. by the person. Um, I mean, I don't know what's to. I don't see anything to fear, you know, in me. I mean, I. Are you curious about other people's reactions when they're? Um, I'm. Fear. I mean, just to go back to that term, fear. I'm full of fear. I mean, I'm afraid of people. Yeah. I'm, people are scary. You know, yeah. And they're not to be trusted. And, uh, they're monsters. Yeah. And um, the best that I can do is to, you know, uh, because I need, you know, I need people's um, being a human being, uh, and also being, you know, this probably sounds strange to you, but a romantic at heart, you know, that I need family, you know, and I yeah, need. Yeah, no, it's not strange to me at all. I can see that in your work. And um, so I'm comfortable with having what I call my tribe, you know, which is the people that, you know, are my family you know and the people that I care about and it's not it's not necessarily blood but it's uh, it's you know the people that you know you know I I consider worthy to let into my tribe and once in that tribe you know I mean I'll 
put myself on the line for them, but not, not for these other th tribes that they, you know, like, you know, the USA or the, or the just the human beings <laughs> like faith in humanity and no, I don't have faith in humanity. But your success has probably brought a lot of people in, into your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I people that that are in. You know that that are my tribe come from all walks of life, from this, from the lowest to the highest. You know, you know, and some of them, you know, probably uh, wouldn't normally sit down with each other, but have been forced to sit down with each other, which is kind of nice. Are you comfortable with your success? Um. I'm never comfortable ever. Um, so, success just means you know having to deal with another fucking piece of shit that's thrown at me, you know. <laughs> and so that's I just got to deal with it. Are you disappointed in other artists, young artists coming up, modern artists overall, like? When you look out and you see new artists, are you disappointed? I don't look <laughs> that much. You know? um, I, it's not my problem. You know? My problem was just getting through this, you know, this uh, this sentence, <laughs> you know, that I have for whatever how many years. I mean, I thought my sentence was um, was only gonna be. You know, like, you know, 20 or 30 years, but now uh, here I am, 50 years old. <laughs> so my sentence, no, if I'm not, I'm 52. So my sentence on this prison was a little bit longer than, than I originally anticipated, but, um, I, I realized that, um, you know, it, it, this prison that, I, that I'm in, um, there's a lot of good things here. Uh, you know, uh, one of the best things that, you know, that I experienced in this prison was having, you know, the most amazing, like, woman in, in the world, you know, my wife with me. And so I'm thankful for, you know, that for the sentence, you know, that lasted this long so that I could have this really you know, special um, experience, you know. So the, you know, time in prison is not always bad. You know, there it's some of it is really shitty and some of it's really good. And um, I know that um, the, that it's, it's probably going to get really, really bad um, towards the end because I've seen so many people suffer. Do you have health insurance? Yeah. But I didn't used to, but I have it yeah, now. I know, I can't afford it. I know, but maybe that's one of the good things you asked that could happen with success, so-called success. But uh, but even but like looking at, um, I mean, look researching like what happens with health insurance is like realizing what a, what a bunch of crap that is, you know. So I have health insurance. So what? I mean, <laughs> they can. I mean, having health insurance is maybe worse than not having it. How so? Well, you know, it's. I don't want to get into all the details. I mean, you can watch a bunch of documentaries on the subject. Sicko. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not. Yeah, it'd be too much of a tangent to yeah. to get off on, but uh, but just the idea that that certain things that you think, uh, you know, are to your advantage are not always. So maybe, in your situation, it's not necessarily. Better or worse, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just whatever, it's, you, you have to, to deal with it, it's, you know, and I'm going to have to deal with my choices, and, you know, we make these choices in life, and uh, whether we like it or not, you know, we have to live with them. Any regrets? Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I have, like, many Many regrets, but not, but, but in a, just in a, in a sense that, um, like I, I've been stupid most of my life, I think, 
but I try, you know, I try to, uh, to do the best I, I could, but I think, you know, in retrospect, um, there's certain things I would have done better, but, but not, but thinking of who I was at the time and what my capabilities were, no, that's the best I could have done in those situations, but I regret I wasn't smarter then, or what, or I did, or, of course, I mean, we're all going to die with regrets. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. and that's the hardest part of, you know, uh, of death is, is the regrets. Yeah.